We used to be able to make an honest living as a criminal without having our lives in danger. Some dude's on the subway using smoke bombs like he's the Riddler. Unless the city finds a Batman, I'll be much safer here. Felony assaults are up, grand larceny, burglaries. The cops basically stop doing their job altogether because people don't like them anymore. And by the way, I'm not some pro-cop guy, as you can imagine. Now, I was as excited as the next guy when they started getting rid of cops, but these violent idiots are taking advantage of it. You know, at least in prison, there's rules, you know, which guy's not to say the wrong thing to, what not to do. And New York is just arbitrary. There's no predicting it. Serious crime's up nearly 14 yeah, apparently the mayor's trying to use drones to stop all the crime now. It's like, yeah, no thank you. I'll be very fine here. It's like the 1990s Brooklyn that the rappers talk about. Yeah, I don't want to live in the Brooklyn the rappers talk about, okay? I'm crazy. Old ladies are getting punched in the head. Needles everywhere. Heaven forbid I need to sit down for a second. Guys, I appreciate the offer to let me out on parole, but I am quite fine here, okay? <laughs> I actually lived in New York City when the rappers were rapping about it still in the 90s, and um, safe to say... I wouldn't go back there right now myself. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Ukradowski here. We are Change.org. And man, there's lots of crazy news, especially coming out of Taiwan and the South Asian Sea. Russia just demonstrated that their hypersonic Satan II weapon systems to the world, as we're finding out today that the United States is just throwing weapons willy-nilly all over eastern Ukraine. Yeah, lots of crazy news to get into today. Also, very interesting comments about Elon Musk surrounding the downfall of Netflix. We're going to be getting into all of this, plus a lot more, all on this independent media broadcast. But before we do, the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast is, of course, by the very talented, incredible Ryan Long. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, what are you doing? We will link you down in the description below. And if you want to watch the full video that we started off this broadcast with make sure to also check out the links in the description and and truly this man does incredible art and his videos deserve a lot more views than they're getting and it's not easy being a comedian these days as of course the most orwellian absurd headlines are becoming the reality of our current situation thanks to the corporate media that's dragging our society towards total lunacy and insanity this is perfectly represented by the washington post a Rag, alleged newspaper that's owned by one of the world's richest people that, of course, is becoming more of an activist PR representative of the billionaire class, as, of course, the Washington Post just recently doxed an anonymous social media account called the Libs of TikTok. The Washington Post literally linked to the private details of where this person was living. And now, to add insult to injury, the Washington Post is literally lying with their official statement on this matter, which, of course, concerns everyone, since, of course, other journalists and activists are saying, oh, it it's fair to, to publish someone's private home details of their family members fair game i'll do the same which is a huge dangerous step taken by the washington post originally there's no going back from this they're lying literally lying you could see the original piece they released and it contradicts their statement directly which is an absolute insult to injury and while some quote media organizations are lying slandering and trying to get average people targeted harassed and attacked other media organizations like the new york times are taking time to do these kind of risque photo shoots as the new executive editor of the new york times was just covered in a feature piece in new New York Magazine highlighting this bewildering photo of him shoeless laying on the ground in what could only be described as a very bizarre uncomfortable situation for everyone's eyes and as the executive editors of the New York Times lay out for their fashion shoots real journalists like Julian Assange are being absolutely screwed by the system as a recent UK court ruling makes him one step closer towards US extradition another court decision that did not go in favor of Julian Assange who is most likely going to be appealing this verdict as of course this case keeps dragging on and on and on as Julian Assange who has done more credible journalism than most likely the entire ethos of the current media state is literally rotting behind bars in jail for years now for daring to release documents holding governments accountable and showing how they were lying 
to their citizens for this crime of publishing data, information to the general public that made the people in power look bad. The people in power are punishing him. And this is one of the biggest travesty of injustices in our modern day. The second biggest travesty of injustice is, of course, what happened to Mr. Jeffrey Epstein, a man who had federal government and intelligence agency protection for over 30 years as he committed some of the worst awful acts that we can't even mention here on this YouTube channel. We can't even tell you what this man did, but let's just say it's some of the worst acts you could ever commit on the face of this earth. And today we're finding out that the warden that oversaw his demise, that oversaw the overwhelming amount of coincidences that led to Mr. Epstein's demise is trying to quietly retire and in the midst of of an investigation examining the huge federal cover-up crime that was committed here by those in government. As, of course, every step of the way here, we see complicit illegal actions paid for by your tax dollars, which aided and abetted to this larger trafficking and extortion operation, and, of course, its eventual cover-up, which, obviously, this warden is a part of. There should be a lot more attention on this warden, on the prison guard who were also given an extremely lenient slap on the wrist by the federal government that was investigating itself throughout all of this. This, as the Ghislaine Maxwell case, still largely is hidden from the general public as a lot of the documents, a lot of the evidence, according to the judge proceeding over the case, was too salacious and too crazy for the general public to even be allowed to understand. But now we're finding out that a judge is unsealing some of those documents, specifically when it comes to Epstein's old friend, Glenn and Eva Dubbin, as of course there's another lawsuit involving them and Ghislaine Maxwell. Why are these documents under under seal? Why are they classified? Why are they locked away from the general public when, when your taxes paid for all of this? What details are too salacious and crazy for the general public to, to, to be kept, to, kept away from? Again, serious questions that deserve some answers, but sadly we live in a corrupted system that cheered on and promoted Ghislaine Maxwell Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein as some kind of rich moguls, as of course the corporate media, VH1, and other mainline entertainment institutions literally promoted these individuals to you as if they were great, amazing human beings. And in related, absolutely evil entertainment Hollywood news, we of course have the latest news coming in today that Netflix is being absolutely financially obliterated as their stock prices have fallen 32% after the company already lost over 200,000 subscribers in 2022. This is its biggest drop in decades. They lost over $40 billion. Billion would it be in value. And their numbers are expected to plummet even more from here. As of course, the entertainment giant recently spiked up their prices and announced that they're going to be, quote, cracking down on people sharing their passwords. Yeah, that's going to make consumers uh, really happy there. Now, why is this happening? Is Netflix releasing Cuties Part 2? No, no. According to the court, Corporate media. Netflix is blaming all of this on inflation and, quote, the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine for the stagnant subscription growth. Yes, the corporate media and Netflix are trying to tell you that it's Putin's fault for the low abysmal numbers for this streaming giant that, of course, is getting an absolute reality check. As, of course, I think it's fair to say that their programming has changed over the years dramatically, pushing the envelope of woke culture, which, according to Elon Musk, the woke mind virus, quote, makes Netflix unwatchable. And these are very pointed, important comments by one of the world's most influential, powerful, and richest people, as, of course, it represents a cultural pushback against a lot of the nonsense, a lot of the divide-and-conquer agenda that has been pushed on the general public, and here and there, passively consuming some Netflix series, which I hate to admit to, I do have to say that there has been an overwhelming amount of nonsense, of, of content that is, that is mainly focused at, at, at jamming down a, a political woke ideology rather than, of course, interesting or, or thought-provoking plot lines. You know, there, there's always been subconscious subliminal propaganda in entertainment, but, but now we've reached a point where it's literally being beaten over your head 
has nothing to do with the storyline and leaves a lot of people viewing entertainment like, like okay sure yeah we get it all evil people are, are white and, and guys but what in the world does that have to do with this freaking mars zombie movie i have no idea it's also important to note that netflix has partnered with individuals like barack obama very intently in creating content it's also important to note that the co-founder of netflix mark randolph is a direct relative to both Zygmunt Freud and Edward Bernays, both very important figures in psychology and propaganda. And I think it's fair to say that Netflix has taken the propaganda and psychology to a level that's unbearable and unwatchable for a lot of critically rational thinking people. And I think what's happening in the online media landscape is not just affecting Netflix, it's also affecting CNN Plus and a lot of other corporate mainstream media that absolutely is being obliterated by horrible ratings, horrible Horrible numbers, and this could explain their blatant attack pieces on, of course, the internet, where the best ideas have to compete with each other, and honesty and your reputation succeed the amount of marketing money you have to try to buy influence. The world is changing, CNN Plus, Netflix are going down, and my subscriptions to LukeUncensored.com are going up dramatically. Yes, cheesy plug and a segue here, but but it, it, it's true. I started my own platform. I had it for a number of years now. I started to take it very seriously within the last few years. I've been able to create master classes, educational resources on survival, on training, on online social media influence, and also provide access to special events, special t-shirts that are only available for members like this one, which I'm super excited about, which you can only get if you're a part of our semi-secret quasi, not really so secret society, all exclusively on LukeUncensored.com where I have been focused Focusing a lot of my efforts, my blood, sweat, and tears more on producing content there that I am here. The media landscape is changing. It's becoming way more interesting, but it's also providing an opportunity for a lot of the newer people to create and build institutions, platforms, and ideas that are not only competing with the mainstream but also kicking its butt. So when you sign up to LukeUncensored.com, you don't only get this platform and invest into it, you invest into the future of this media organization, which is growing, which is expanding, and of course, which strives to help people as best as we can, as today's video is going to be another important one, which you could only exclusively get on our own platform. I hope to see you there later on today on Luke uncensored.com for a very serious discussion that's only going to be available on our own platform. Now, geopolitically, I would have to say that our their, uh, our current situation on the world stage is, is very tumultuous, and that, of course, was very much felt by the people of Taiwan today as a Taiwanese news station mistakenly broadcast that there was breaking news of a Chinese invasion and that people shouldn't panic. Hey, there's an army coming. Don't panic, though. Yes, that's really helpful advice there from this Taiwanese TV channel that, of course, scared the other you-know-what out of the Taiwanese people. And we have to understand here that this most likely was a military exercise to see the response and readiness of the general public and, of course, might be even foreshadowing some very serious consequences and turbulent geopolitical situations ahead of us. This, as one of China's top military generals just told our defense secretary, that Taiwan is a part of mainland China and is threatening that relations between the United States and China are going to be in shambles if the United States doesn't succeed to this larger point and back off from protecting Taiwan, as of course the Chinese military has been conducting many military exercises, practicing their total invasion and conquest of that country. The Chinese government also has set up a military alliance with the Solomon Islands, which has a lot of geopolitical strategists saying that the Chinese could set up a military base right off of the coast of Australia in just four weeks from now. And I think it's very fair to say that China is expanding its empire. And even though a lot of our focus is centered on Russia, that we have to understand that our current foreign policy is bringing Russia and China closer together and creating more of a tumultuous situation for us that, in my opinion, is not in our geopolitical strategic interest. You know what else isn't in our interest? The White House just dumping weapons into Europe 
with no ability to track them, with no access to any accountability, as the U.S. government was asked, how do you know what even happens to the billion of dollars of weaponry you're sending to Ukraine? The United States answered saying, yeah, we don't really know. This from the same administration that, of course, is warning about the horrors of, of weapons and violence on the streets as they literally pour weapons all over the world. The United States is not just the world's largest exporter, but admittedly, whether in Mexico, in Libya, or now in Ukraine, especially also in Syria, the United States literally has just offloaded, even in Afghanistan, offloaded tremendous amounts of weaponry that of course a lot of criminal sinister gangs and cartels will be having in their possessions as of course the biden administration is going to be working on disarming the american public while they are helping arm some of the worst criminal elements in this world. Russia has also just revealed their own weapons system to the world, calling it literally, I'm, I'm not kidding you, Satan 2. That's the name of the new intercontinental ballistic missile that was just tested by Russia in a saber rattle move that of course is meant to signal to the West of its ability to be able to hit them as even according to Russian officials, this demonstration will quote, provide food for thought for our enemies as this missile is capable of being launched in many places around the world and of course have devastating effect as we're also learning that a u.s surveillance plane was flying over the black sea just minutes before the russian flagship naval vessel was hit by a ukrainian missile this has a lot of russians speculating that the united states partook in the destruction of a major russian vessel and of course complicates the situation and whether the effort was coordinated or not we do not know but of course it complicates the situation and absolutely is dangerous absolutely is reckless and when there should be de-escalation there's only escalation and i do believe that there has been a concerted effort not just by the powers that be not just with those in government but of course the corporate media trying to prolong this conflict as long as they can as of course this means records profits for the military industrial complex chaos on the world stage and the lack of accountability for the last two years of absolute nonsense that the people of the world were forced to go through that there has been no accountability for why because everyone's eyes are on Russia. We're dealing with with the crazy situation, lots of distractions, lots of news. If you thought I did a good job documenting it for you today so you could understand what's happening on the world stage, share this video with your friends, family members, random strangers. Literally, just scroll through your messaging services. Someone messaged you, just send them back this video without even a comment. And because you do that, that's one of the few reasons that I'm still here. I got one more video coming your way on LukeUncensored.com. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And this is why I love you guys stay tuned for a lot more here on wearechange.org